Uh. All right, hello everyone. Tis I, your resident PvP patter and host of. Wait, why am I giving my intro as if I'm giving my crystal coffee time? What the hell? All right, yeah. Hi, my name is Masi, and um, yeah, we're gonna be doing. Uh, well, I just finished a stream earlier today, and if you know uh, about our streams, it should be. Well, actually, if you haven't seen any of our streams, why are you not watching them? Links will be somewhere up here. Check it out. Um, and if you want more information, check us out on our Discord. But anyways, uh, today we are going to be viewing over basically how to do your burst damages as a healer. Are you sure about that? I mean, no, a healer is the wrong word. Probably support. Burst damage as support, right? Uh, because you do a lot of da damage as, as, as the green DPS. So... It's going to be mainly focusing on like the, because the burst rotation is very simple. So I'll go over the different situations of how you can use them as well as how to uh, sort of tempo yourself so you can time that with healing, right? I won't be going as healing as much. Keep it in mind. I'll go maybe some tips on survivability, but not so much healing. OK, healing is in healing priority. That's too advanced for what this calm this video is about. This video is about doing damage, bro. And technically speaking, you can heal your teammates by killing more enemies because that is effectively reducing the amount of damage they take. So big brain, right? Oh, also a disclaimer, uh, I'm not saying this is what you have to do. You're free to change up as much as you want or you can discard this entirely. This video is just for my is just for information, right? For, and for you to learn. Anyways, uh, yeah, uh, we'll, I'll put the time steps also at the bottom as well as on the bar. You'll probably see the things over here uh and lastly we have our friend sarah uh she's gonna be helping us for some of the exam uh examples that i need to show that need a party member okay anyways on the video oh, yeah See ya. baby hey everyone editor masi here so this video won't be as highly edited or as goofy or memey as i normally do it as i am about to go on vacation so i want to make sure at least i got this video out for you guys so i hope you guys don't mind the direct delivery of this video anyways let's get started all right so astro combination very simple i probably don't think i have to go too much in detail let us go to here is so your D dps combination now look it's subjective DPS combination can actually either be double cast, so gravity, double cast, and macrocosmo, right? Or it could be macrocosmo gra and double cast gravity, right? It all depends on the situation. Uh, to be honest, I like doing this order better than the other one. The reason why is because I find the damage to be more instant, right? It's more quicker that way. That's the way I see it. But if you know you're getting bursted well in advance, right? You can start off with Macrocosmo first so that you can have the heal. For example, if you're dark or if you're going in and you want to be a little more like safe, you would Macrocosmo first and then you would double cast gravity, right? Uh, if you want to slow down the enemy, for example, if you, if you are working with dark, right? And you see your the enemies all grouped up, like let's say your enemies are grouped up over here, right? You want to kind of peek in double cast Double, uh, double gravity so you can slow them down so that your dark can dive in. Save the second gravity so that you can combo that with your macrocosmo when you go in, right? Also, FYI, macrocosmo is pretty big. It's like uh, 20, uh, 20 yom radius. So you don't have to be right in their face. Ideally, the best place, it's 20 yoms from like your, your, your center. So 10 yoms this way, 10 yoms the other way, right? So your full diameter is 20. So you want to stand roughly in the middle, like let's say uh, the enemy, the enemies over here uh, and your friendlies are like these guys right here, right? So you want to stand roughly where this node is, right? That big of a space so that when I use it, right, I'm able to hit both like the entire sides, right? This is roughly like, this is roughly like what, five yams over here. So this hits probably 10. So it's more or less that, that's 10 yams, right? So it's 10 yams this way, 10 yams the other way. Right, so I do this in the middle. Uh, if you want to really min max damage, right, you can you can do this. You can use your cards ahead of time and pray. Like the card thing is always RNG. You won't always get. Okay, well that's just lucky. You won't always get balanced the first draw, but if you do get balance, ideally you kind of just like use it when you go in. But you can hold it for like 15 seconds, bro. Like recast is, is 20 seconds. 
you can hold it for 15 seconds, right? So I'm gonna, once the timer goes out, right? For example, I can just hold it. I see I don't get balance. Um, the DPS is like, I get the, the, DP, the defense reduction one. I can hold it for like 15 seconds, right? And you can see the timer over here, right? You can wait until literally one second, use it. And then if you don't want the card, you can still redraw almost immediately after. See, why you, why? Where's my DPS card? Why are you like this? Bro, this is like, it's like gambling. I swear to God, I swear for gamblers. But yeah, uh, and also really, also all three LB, by the way. Uh, ideally, you draw the card first and then you LB. The reason why is because your LB is, um, you do more damage, basically front loaded. So it's front loaded damage, right? So the best way to optimize your damage for your LB is to do this because this is your biggest burst of damage. So you want to make sure that it's still within the time frame, right? So if you do your LB, your combination is as following. So pray, let's pretend this is balance, right? You LB. Then you Maca Cosmo and then you double gravity. Right? That's how you really maximize your damage. So it's within the like the five second time frame. Right? While you have the most like strongest version of the buff. Uh if you want to go for like heal balance here heal balance tempo. Ideally your tempo for what's it called? Astro. Okay, let me swap this to be like like this. Okay. So let's say you finish your burst, right? Your burst, let's take these out. Let's say you finish your burst, right? So you do you do this first. This is your burst. You still have two other actions for your heal. These are your two heal buttons, which is aspect benefit and your double cast aspect benefit. Now, Macro Cosmo is a heal. You can use it I, ideally for a heal, but more, more likely than not, you use it for damage. So if you, like I said, follow or stay roughly in the middle of the enemy team, don't the middle, middle of between your enemy team and, and your team, right? If the team is more aggressive, you use macro if your team it, your team is more aggressive and the enemy team's running away you can be more aggressive and be more like closer to the enemy if you're if you're playing more defensively or more passively use macro cosmos closer to your team right for your heals your aspect benefit and being honest these charge really really quickly so the way you normally do is you would do the gravity bomb with macro cosmos and then during the downtime select your heal targets and then your DPS window, as soon as gravity is available, that's when you go out again. Ideally, you save the double gravity when you have a, a macrocosmo available. So ideally, you always have double gravity and macrocosmo, but you will have an extra charge because this is 15 second cooldown timer versus this being 30. So you can have still a double window. It's just if you use a double heal, only do one gravity because you it's way more beneficial if you, if you use this whole combo together, right? Don't do this. Ideally, if you have my Cosmo, do this. Don't do this, right? Always do this. Always do this for maxing damage, right? Trust me, you 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 you'll get more kill steals that way. Oh, by the way, uh, Macro Cosmo is very good for kill stealing. Uh, what else can I say real quick? Oh yeah, purify. Right. Okay. So these guys are very hot. So Astros are very hot topic. Like very like if most people when they see an Astro, they tend to focus them first. So before you engage, I'm being honest, I actually recommend Purify. If you know, if you have high battle high, you are a target. They will kill you. So use Purify ahead of time if you can. Okay. All right, cool. And also uh, use your shields if you know you're being really, really like if you use, use guard if you're being really, really risky. Um, I don't have to explain how healing works because it's obvious. It says right there. It The lower the HP is, the more it does healing. Okay. You, you. Use your brain for that. <laughs> okay. Anyways, uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's it for Astro actually. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Oh yeah. Uh, right. I probably should say this. So your battle, your damage at base is roughly like 30k, or it's 28k base. And if you use your LB with the balance card, you could do like 40k damage. Okay. Cool. Awesome. All right. All right. Let us do. Ooh, yeah, white mage. Okay, this one has a couple things. So we'll have our friend Sarah. Sh she's gonna um, she's gonna come in here and actually help us out for a few of the demonstrations because it's basically how Seraph Strike works. But first, let's go over the combination. So your combination, your DPS combination, is actually very simple. It's just Seraph Strike and Misery in this order. You have to do Seraph Strike and Misery, right? 
Reason why you do in that order is because it's how you get more instant damage. If it's too risky to jump in, then just misery is fine. But every single 20 seconds, you have this burst damage. Okay? You always, so that's roughly like every single 20 seconds, you will have roughly 20, no wait, yeah, 20, 20k damage. Okay? Also, Seraph Strike, FYI, it's 10, 10 yom radius of hit, meaning it's big. It's, it's basically, if I were to hit this target, this one gets hit. That's far as hell. Okay? But it's also, uh, like, here. But it's also, like, that's also the heal radius to people who got protect. So ideally, if you want to be super safe, you would serve a strike onto an engaging, uh, like, the safest way. Serve a striking into an engaging uh, DPS. And then... DPSing out. Okay, so just to demonstrate like how the healing works, right? So we all know that for uh, Seraph Strike, if you target anybody, you can select yourself and heal, right? Or you, or you base select yourself and start healing. However, there is a mechanic where actually I can target somebody else for my cure uh, three. So basically, how it's, it's, it's very easy, right? But uh, if, if I want to heal multiple people at the same time, right? I can do here, and then I can select Sarah, and let's say she's surrounded by a bunch of people, and they get healed, right? Kind of cool, right? Now, when it comes to using your LB, your LB gives a regen, but it also gives a damage buff, right? It gives a damage buff, so you actually want to use the actions after you LB. LB works as following, right? You line up, Ideally, you pick the closest target and you line up. It doesn't matter which way uh, the target is facing. It matters which way I'm facing, right? So I, if I want to hit the most targets, right? You see there's one person here. I could do that one. I would never hit directly like this way because there's nobody. You line up where there's most amount of enemies. In this way, in this case, there's three here. So I would LB here, this direction. And then I would dash and then I would use the uh, Affluence Misery. So that's a bomb, right? Base damage here, I think, is like a mental math gives me like... 40k total damage, right? And then the regen tick. Uh, another cool thing about your LB, right? Now, if, if you guys didn't know, if you guys do know that when you LB, you give uh, a regen effect, right? However, it's around you and not just when you cast it. So check this out. So I'm gonna LB here and I have Sarah down here. I'm gonna walk up to them. And if you notice when I get close, right? They get the regen effect. It takes time, like 2.5 seconds. Like, uh, but then they, but they will get it. So that's something uh, But if you didn't know, now you know. Pretty cool. Now, if I were to think about your shield, if you want to be the safest, you can give your shield, you can use it before you dive in. If you want, before you dive in with Seraph Strike, if you want to give yourself the most amount of protection. But if you have good reaction time, you can actually use it after you use your misery while you're in the enemy team because if you get cc'd you'll get double shield right same thing actually the shield is really helpful is if you have a friendly or yourself gets binded by a dark pull instead of opting to use purifier right away use aqua veil because aqua veil will give you double shield and free you at the same time so it'll count as a pot and you have a cc out right or a CC, like a CC break, I guess? CC cleanse, there you go, CC cleanse, right? Now, uh, as for polymorph and, and getting out, I suggest using polymorph and being honest or miracle of nature, whichever way you want to call it. Uh, not when the dark knight jumps, but roughly after the dark knight sucks. Because if the dark knight sucks and you block it with polymorph, then they basically waste a suck. If you do it when they jump in, they still have their suck. They can still suck you guys back in, right? If if the Dark Knight starts like preemptively or starts starts blocking after they do their um, their salted earth, then you start polymorphing when they jump in. Okay, so that's a little like counterplay you have to do, and yeah, that's how you play around that, right? Oh, also think about your LB. Right, I think it probably cut to the clip. We read the clip about like how your LB regen works. Um, if you're getting dived on really hard by multiple darks and you have follow up, 
being honest, using your LB defensively to stun the Dark's follow-up is also a really good strat for doing damage. You don't... What, what you would do in that case... So let's say Dark is target number one, right? And the follow-up is right behind him. So what you would do is you would first LB the Dark in follow-up. Then you would dive in to the Dark so you get the heal. And then you would Alphabus Misery his follow-up. So you get the heal protect on your team. And then you still have the stun damage to the back line. Okay? So that's really like min-maxing that damage. Right? As for your heal tempo, after you do the combo of like healing and Sarah Strike, you just basically cure whoever you can. Most of the time, you won't be in the enemy fight unless you are going for a risky Seraph Strike. But you'll mainly be away from a team fight just casting cure two because the range is pretty far and aqua veil right you don't want to be in a team fight unless you have to be in a team fight that's the best way to play white mage okay let's do scholar okay so scholar this is the this is the damage guide damage guide we're not focusing on healing healing you do decent healing okay you do uh you do like 9k total healing well i mean 6k shield 3k heal so you actually do a lot of healing healing um, but it, it won't be listed on the boards. Uh, that aside, you're only healing. Your only he healing button is when you summon Seraph, because Seraph gives everyone X Cog, and basically at low HP. Right, where is it? Low HP. Which one is it? X Cog, right here. Right, only gives people your your party members X Cog when Seraph is summoned. Right, not while it's Seraph is up. Okay, that's the main healing, and it's really good for clutching, to be honest. It's 8k and it stacks a battle high. Right? The this is Seraphic Flight is also pretty good. Constellation extra for so it's really good for like extra like budget healing. Um, that's your only heal buttons. Nothing else gives heal. Also, it gives you basically like a free um what's it called? Uh purify. Keep it in mind, Seraph Flight, if you're casting yourself and you want to be really aggressive, casting this gives you a free, free Purify. I know I know we're starting off with like the DPS guy, but I have to explain how this works first because it's very because people forget how the LB works. Because most of the time, if you're padding, you actually use Summon Seraph for the secondary buff of giving Recitation, which, is, which buffs your damage. Now, okay, so the actual DPS, right? So this is the combination. Adlo, Biosis, actually no, not Biosis, I'm, I'm stupid. Uh, Add low, expedient, biosis, deployment tactic. This is the combo. If you want to hit nine nine mil damage, trust me, I've hit nine mil, I've hit ten mil, I've hit eleven mil damage on 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 um, scholar. This is the combination, right? It it it's two factors: the combination and who you target. Okay, so let's go over this, let's go over this real quickly, right? So add low first cast add low on yourself. Add low will buff your damage. Expedient will double the damage of biosis, right? Spend pick a target. Ideally, it's squishy and then spread it. You can't shoot on dummies, you can't see on dummies, but by itself, base spread damage is 4.8k or 5k dot, which is a lot of damage, right? Now, in front lines, you want to spread this dot on a squishy. A squishy is basically any of the ranged like uh, classes and healers that have the least amount of damage mitigation on them, meaning there are certain actions, for example, um like protect from white mage that give a 10 percent damage reduction that gets factored into the biosis damage right so the way that dots work is it does damage based on what buffs you have and what debuffs the enemy has and regardless of whether the enemy will use a shield after you get the dot after they get the dot it will still do the same damage as when it was first applied so keep that in mind okay the only thing that will probably mitigate dot damage is have them having like actual like like the, the yellow shields that's what we know will mitigate the damage but they will still get the same dot tick all right so keep that in mind that's how people get a lot of damage okay you can't block it with shields i mean, I mean you can't block it with guard you can't you can't like okay uh always try to make sure that you have recitation up it's every single 30 seconds so try to pop this almost immediately when you get it if you're going for a dot now 
there are times where you won't have expedient ready so this is still fine but make sure you always have add low up on yourself when you're going for dot spread because it's still an extra it's a free eight percent damage right add low buffs you by eight percent so it's still pretty big and also it gives you shield so when you're being really aggressive you have an extra shield now um when it comes to looking for spreads i suggest so you see how i'm tired of this, this individual person even though yes it'll spread to here ideally i go more to where the cluster of people are right because if i go the spread right it's 15 yom or it's 15 yom radius off the person it's big okay so ideally you go for the most clumpy parts and also make sure yeah like i say it is a squishy uh least amount of mitigation stuff that kind of stuff okay uh as for tempo for what's it called um scholar your tempo you want to play is basically first cast uh your add low then expedient then select the dot target dot that target right spread it and then during the downtime of biolysis you spend time looking for a new target you select that target you can mark them with like a bind with like a target one or whatever you want to use for your bind so that next time for example you're going you don't have to search the crowd right you just immediately like select the target right and if you are a ps4 or like a like a console user you hack you can create a macro that will target biosis to target one right makes it a lot more easier that way or or not target one or even make it like a bind eight or whatever like or a target eight seven six whichever you want just make it so that's easier for yourself if you're playing console okay uh and i, I mentioned um seraph earlier so your actual like combo can be something like like this right and so it doesn't have to be expedient every single time it could just be like summon it could be like add low then you summon, uh, or you can do like, yeah, the, 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 the expedient biases spread. Or you can do, why do I not have Seraph on my bar again? Did I just take, I took it off. I just happened last video too. And I completely forgot. Okay, so now you see it's on cooldown, but my Bales is ready. Now I can just use uh, add low, summon Seraph, Bialysis spread. And I can still have it. And then next time Bells is ready, I'll have Expedient ready. Actually, now that uh, Expedient is ready and Bells is not, I can actually press Expedient right away. So the cooldown starts, right? And then I spread Bialysis. The main thing is you don't want to drop the add low, right? Because if I refresh add low right now, I'm going to get a stronger add low boost, like shield and healing. Or not, not, not healing, uh, shield, my bad. And then it's, it's, it's just spread. So it doesn't feel like that good. Anyways. Uh, that's basically it, right? Did I already mention don't spread to tanks? Yeah, don't don't spread to tanks, right? There's, there's this myth going around that if you spread it to in front lines, if you spread it on a, on a dragoon that has their life of the dragon up, you do more damage and hitting a squishy. We have a video somewhere that I'll post, right? We made a short on it of de debunking scholar dot buff. If you don't believe me, check the video, see for yourself. Okay. Oh, right. Uh, last thing, actually, I should mention real quick. This will take like five seconds. There is something called uh, double spreading, right? Or, or double spread. It's basically when you have your, the two teams are fighting, right? Like this. Like there, there's the one team here, one team here. You want to spread the dot on a team, on like the enemy team that is running back to his team while they're still on the team. For example, there, let's say there is a really cheeky machinist that's fighting in between a pole, right? And he's red, but currently he's stuck in blue, right? So I would spread the dot on the machinist that's, that is from red so that when he runs back to his team, right? So for example, it's, it's this guy right here, target number one, right? I do, I do, I do the full combo of heal expedient and then i have bialysis dot the machinist right and then he's gonna run back to his team this way right i so first i spread it into a crowd so that the crowd that he's in blue will, will get the dot damage then when he runs back into his team in red i i spread it again to red so that both teams have one dot so it's really min maxing one dot and it's the super buff dot right it's the one that has the add load experience and the bios uh, add low expedient buff right not just the add low buff so it's a really strong dot and that's how double dot spread that's how you really like maximize damage during a team fight 
right? And wither, we don't talk about wither, okay? Wither, wither, you you do whenever you can, okay? Don't if it's too risky, it's it's just six k damage, bro. Your spread does more damage than wither, so only do it when you want to maybe kill steel. But you will kill starts kill ceiling once you have higher battle high. So yeah. Uh, I'm being honest. This job is really hard to explain for burst because there's many, many different options. Okay, there are so many different iterations to do play to play Sage. Like we have, um, I think I'll probably cut to the dive bombing one real quick. Okay, so uh, also, okay, so for Sage dash tech, right? So let's say I want to, let's say the enemy's over here and I want to do something called dive bombing. If I have someone as a focus target, a team of focus target, I can dash in and then dash out like that really quickly. Now, if I want to add some attacks into this, for example, there's a huge crowd over there. Good job action. So I can do this. I can do Icarus. Actually, before that, I can pop Purify at a time. So I can prevent myself from getting CC'd. Then I can do this. And then I can dash out. If you want to super simplify it even more, you want to do a little more damage, you can do this. Okay, so combo will go like this. So we're going to Purify, then Toxicon, then dash in, bomb, and then dash out, right? And it could be a really far range. So we get Icarus is 25 yams. Okay, so she can be standing even like over here and I'll still teleport to her, right? As long as there's not too many blockages in like the line of sight, then I'll be able to teleport. So it's a great like way to just do a lot of damage without having that much punishment. Okay. Another way you could also do it uh, if you want to play even risky is you can actually dash in, bomb, and then cover so that you don't get stunned. And then after that, you dash out. Right? If you want to be even more like safe, you can do that combination. Right? Okay. But your most basic thing that you have to have on when you are engaging, when you yourself are engaging, doesn't matter when your enemy team is engaged, we'll go we'll focus on you for now, right? A sage, focus on yourself first. Your team can come after, right? You want your damage, not the team's damage. Okay? You could pocket somebody after you do your damage. Anyways, keep cardio on yourself. First and foremost, if you were going in, right? And then, so we'll put that first. We'll put Cardia first. Now, you want to have a higher damage or you want to have give yourself shields, right? Don't forget when you give, when you, whoever you have Cardia on will give yourself shields. So Cardia on yourself, give yourself shields, right? When you use your enhanced doses. So, so we do Eucrasia, Eucrasia doses, right? This, whenever you're engaging, no matter what, you'll do this combo. So if you want to just dot damage, you just do this, right? You, well, your Eucrasia itself will always be on you. So basically, it's just Eucrasia and Vendosis. Ideally, in front lines, you use it on a Squishy. It doesn't really matter who you do it, but if you really want to be choosy for your damage, you put it on a Squishy because it does it does more dot damage, right? It does what's it called like a 4, 4k dot tick. So it's pretty good. Now, after you give yourself a shield, you want to use Toxicon, right? Toxicon is basically like your poke damage from range. Right? If you want to really min-max your damage, again, you could put Toxicon ahead of time. That's really, really min-max, and like, you can do this, right? You can Eucrasia, Toxicon, then Dot. So you can do a stronger Dot damage by like four, an extra 10%. So there's that. And now if we were to expand on this even more, you want to put Phlegma next, right? So that you get shield damage but that gets amped by Toxicon. Now, all right. So this is more or less like this is more or less like a combo, right? Uh, range combo, right? So shield is always important to have first, no matter what. So give Toxicon out, then use these shields, and then use your Numa. Now Numa is a very wide range. The beam. Okay, let's read this first, real quick. Just make sure you guys read this correctly, right? The range is 25 yams from the person from you to a to to where your target is. If they're right, if you're hitting this target number one, right, it's 25 yams and hits every, everyone behind them. But if you hit, let's say you're targeting this person over here and you're going like this, it's still gonna hit this person, but it won't hit this. It won't like really hit this person, right? Like if I go like this. It's not going to damage this person, but if I, if I had a friendly heal, they'll, they'll get healed, right? So it's that kind of range. Uh, as well, the radius, the reason why there's a radius is because it's from, that's how the shield is distributed, right? So it's 12.5 because it's 25 yam radius. That means if it, it hits a friendly, like this big of a circle, right? Pretty big circle. Okay. Uh, now, if you want to go for a, a DPS engage, 
it's basically you would add in Icarus and then you would add in your Numa, right? So you this is your DPS engage, right? This, this, and then Numa, right? It's, it's, it's a lot of buttons, right? So if you, so it's, there's a lot of setup. Sage, man, you gotta use your head if you play Sage, bro. If you're not using your head and play Sage, bro, you're not playing Sage. It's a really hard job to teach, but once you learn how to do Sage properly, you, you can look super cool, bro. <laughs> Your damage will be not the best, but yeah. Anyway, so dash in, uh, Phlegma, and then ideally, if you have a focus target, you dash out, right? If you've seen the shield bombing thing I showed earlier, that's basically the same thing, right? Uh, last, uh, oh, um, mm, you can also, if you really are safe inside the enemy team, you can use a Toxicon inside of it, or you can like, you can like double Phlegma. Right, you can you can do stuff like this if you're really safe in the enemy team. Ideally, you just have to do something like this for damage, right? If you are able to fit in Toxicon, uh, but most of the night, most of the time, if you're shield bombing, you probably only fit this, right? Uh, what else can we add in? Oh yeah, obviously, if it's risky to engage in the enemy team before you actually dive in with Icarus, you would use your recuperate. Also, um, during your dive bombing, like I said, make sure you can probably use a guard as well. Uh, if we throw in your LB now, your LB does two things, bro. It protects, but it also attacks, right? So if I use my LB, for example, let's say that number one is my is my friendly, and the enemies are number are these guys over here, right? If I use my LB to seal my friendly, I would do the circle like this. If I want the the LB to hit the enemies first, I would do it like this. Right, so if I want to shield my ally, I'll put it here so that they pretend this is the green dot or the right, the blue dot. And you notice, right, it's re it's retaking back after a certain period of time, right? It takes every single like basically two and a half seconds, you get the dot all over again, right? If, if I want to reapply to these guys too, right? They don't get in time by the end of that because it ticks by a certain like rate. And if you pull it off, at the wrong rate if you pull out at the wrong rate it doesn't apply to dot uh the dot debuff or buff right so ideally if you want to like min max why did i put recoup right here it should be purify what the hell okay if you want to use this correctly this combo you do this and then you would move the dot right so if you want to play the most optimized version right I gotta wait for the thing to come back. Okay, let's, let's, do, let's do the combo. Okay. So, let's do this super long sequence of events. <laughs> okay. So, first, give yourself the Cardion. Then you apply the Ecrasia. Then you use the thing. And then you do the Thought. And then you cast the Numa. And then you cast the Shield on yourself. And then you go you dash in and then you do this and then you dash out but we're not dashing out because we're too close and then you give them the, the the dot right the reason why we do this is because we get the shields on ourselves. which well, it would have been here we get the shields on ourselves so that when we go into the enemy team they can't hurt us because they don't have the but the debuff and then we dash out right normally we would dash out but because it's really close we, we're not dashing out uh, you would give them the, the Mesotes so that they get the dot and then they get the dot damage while you're comfy in your enemy team or you're comfy in your team. Now, one thing to reminder is that this scales with battle high. So it's an 8k dot at base, but if there's a battle high, you get 12%, you get 50% more damage. And if the enemy has the Toxicon while you give them the dot, it does 10% more of that. Right, so battle high, battle high five, Masotes dot with no like debuff does like 12k, which is a lot of damage. And if you get the if you have the the, the, the enhanced doses, it, it does even more. Okay, so very very strong. Uh, what else am I missing? I think I cover everything. All right. Uh, also, if it's too risky to engage in the enemy team and you just want to throw the Masotes in the enemy team, you can use it as poke too. Masotis is very good for like blocking off chokeholds, so I suggest placing Masotis uh, like on, on ramps or like chokeholds so that the enemy has to walk through it. More often than not, places where you know your enemy is gonna go. Not where you're gonna go, maybe that helps too, right? 
right? You can place it where you want to go, but ideally you place it where the enemy want to goes. As for like uh, heal up time, doesn't really matter. I'm being honest. Your your only healing actual button is Numa, and you grant shields with your uh, Eucrasian uh, doses. Your cardio healing is only 2k, right? It's very small. There's nothing. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of average, you know. It's fine. 2k. 2k is a lot of healing. It's not. It's, it's not cope. Anyways, um, yeah. It 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 does it does it it does it, 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 it average amount of healing. <clears throat> um, but it's just like it just over a smaller over a smaller period of time over a long period of time it will add up. But ideally, it doesn't really matter. It's just more like if you get the shields. Also, I never mentioned uh, Toxicon tool. It's because it's very situational, right? It's only if your shield breaks from this if it's only if your crazy shield breaks so if you really want to min max damage and you have no regard for your hp and you know you're going to be safe place the cardio on like someone who is taking a lot of damage so you get an extra free uh spam also make sure you read this correctly it's 8k on the person you're targeting not 8k everyone else it's 8k on the person to Two K on the uh, on the on everyone else. Okay, you're a sage player, bro. Use your brain. Come on, this job is not easy. It's hard, and if it, you know that's what makes it fun, you know. We do it because not because it's easy, but because it's hard. All right, all right. I think that covers like everything. This is sage is probably the longest one. Oh god. All right. Uh, yeah. That basically. Wow. I my hair is like horrendous right now. I think it's because I got tired of the sage video. My brain actually left. That shit was so long. Anyways, um, yeah, but that's it for basically this video. Uh, we literally covered like all the jobs for healers and basically just tips and tricks on how to play with jobs. Um, I hope you guys like the uh, content um, that I've been doing for this stuff type of stuff. Like it's 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 kind of funny. It's me me. Look look. I know it's a lot. Okay, I'm glad you guys are stuck around. If you guys see the ending, bro, let me know in the comments if you actually watched the ending. You know, more brownie points to you. You got you guys. You guys get like one free high five. Thank you. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Thank you for making it this far. Um, what was I going to say? Right. Uh, the next video, I don't know what's going to be. I, I don't know what's going to be. There's only one over section, which is going to be melee. Uh, but I don't know when that's going to be out. It might be out before I go on vacation, but... Or not. You better pray. If, if this video does well, I'll put it out before I go on, on my vacation. If not, well, you guys will get it sometime in like two or three weeks. You guys tell me, man. Uh, but yeah, uh, for now, that's it. And oh, yeah, thank you to a model. I'm pretty sure I said at some point. But thank you for Sarah for helping us uh, be our standing model for when we get a, a body double. Appreciate it, bro. Um, but yeah, okay, cool. For now, happy hunting, fellow wolves, and I will see you guys later. Okay? Bye. I look crazy when you say this. What the hell?